Uh, welcome to another Grammar by Dan video. Uh, this time I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. Um, I'm not going to be talking about grammar. Uh, I'm going to be talking about a guy called Martin Buber. Um, and uh, what I think about him and why I think it's important for uh, everyday life. Um, so Martin Buber can be described as a, a Jewish mystic um, who was writing in the early 20th century. Um, but he was also known for his uh, ethics, his ethical philosophy. So um, he was talking about things like what is the good, uh, so what's good to do in, in this world, and also what should we refrain from doing. And one of his most well-known volumes, I don't have it with me, but it's called I and Thou. So I, we all know what I means, it means referring to you as the subject. and. Thou is referring to someone else. If you like, you can replace thou with you. So, I and you. And, um, the reason why I want to talk about this is because for one of my uni subjects, uh, we were talking about Martin Buber. And, uh, for a really good part of that course, I had no idea what he was talking about the lecture when he was talking about Martin Buber. And then, Later in the course, I got it, basically. I, I felt like I, un I it's not, ev not even that I got it. It was something that I could actually identify with. Like, I get this. And it was kind of, I was kind of glad too, because I was like, somebody else gets it, you know. So, the, the idea is this. You have I, and then you have thou, okay. So, you have you, and then you have... A particular kind of relation to something else and the I so you cannot exist without this kind of relation he makes two relations um, in I and thou um, one is I and it okay that's the first relation and I and thou I and you if you like and I and it um, he describes it as not necessarily an object but more of something that you can quantify something that you can um, analyze, something concrete, right? Um, and that would account for most of the objects around today. No. A water bottle would be an I in its relation. I'm relating to the water um, as, a, as an object, as something that I can use, right? Or a book. You, know, you read the book so that you can, uh, you know, get knowledge or whatever. There's always a purpose behind it. Um, <clears throat> but the other relation is the one that I found really interesting. It's the IU relation. And the IU relation was basically people, right? So when I relate to another person, I relate to another you, right? Um, and I, it's a different kind of relation than I it, right? So the IU relation, uh, he describes it with these words. Um, when I confront a human being as my you and speak the basic I you to him, so when I relate to him as a human, he is no thing among things, so he's not in the I it relation, nor does he consist of things. Um, nothing conceptual intervenes between I and you, no prior knowledge and no imagination, no greed and no anticipation. So. The idea is that relating to people is a different thing than relating to a, a book or, a, uh, I don't know, a whiteboard or a car, right? Relating to people involves, he describes it as engagement with your whole being, right? So everything that composes you, you are exposing to the other, or you can choose not to. And, and this is the part that I think is important. Because the kind of openness that Martin Buber was proposing, the kind of I am exposing my whole self to you without greed or anticipation, so nothing conceptual gets in between my relation to other people. Um, it, I had a feeling for a long time that um, the, the kind of culture that we live in was not conducive of that. Right? So some people might say, oh, well, you, know, you can still live in this very 
money oriented, profit oriented, hierarchical society. Uh, you can still live in that, but you can still relate to people on this level. Well, I mean, sure you can, but it's not conducive, right? When you're you're living in that kind of um, society, that kind of system, right? Not conducive of it. You can, but it's hard. Um, and what was striking to me about Martin Buber in the I Thou relation is that this is something that I identify with, right? This is how we should be relating to people, right? So an everyday example is that we use people as the I it every day, right? Um, so for example, you use, if you go on a tram, um, you're, you're using the tram driver, but there's a difference, right? There's a difference. The difference is this. Um, Immanuel Kant, another German philosopher, described it this way. Um, you can relate to people as means, right, to an end. Or you can relate to people just as ends in themselves, right? So you're not using people as a tool. But the idea was that we actually relate to people as means every day. We have to do it, right? You want to go buy something, you use a person to check out your groceries or whatever. But the idea is that you're not just using them as that. You have a, a, a sense in the back of your head that this is a person that has ultimate worth in the end, right? But similarly, with the I-U relation, the I-IT relation, um, it's difficult um, in, in, in everyday interaction to see people as they really are, to truly, and relating now to you, to truly be open to people without anything intervening in between without fear, anticipation, and that kind of thing. Uh, I don't know if this is possible, but I feel like this is how I want to relate to people, right? And, and that's the purpose of this video. But this, even if, you know, we do it naturally, we relate to people with something conceptual in between fear or judgment or anticipation, even if that's something natural, then I want to act in a way that is unnatural, uh, a way that is not, you know, like that. After all, it's your choice. Um, and even if um, there is a social hierarchy or a social system that you need to, you know, abide by in order to get by, um, I want to act against that system, if that's what it's conducive of. Um, I want to be really open to people to expose my whole being to their whole being and to interact with them on that kind of way. Um, and one of the reasons for that is because one, it's ethical to do because of the alternative. If you don't relate to people as their whole being, but as a, a means to an end or as a mere object for your service, um, then you're interacting with them as a means to an end or as an object for your own service. That doesn't seem ethical. That doesn't seem right. It's not worthy of the nature of people, who they are. And that's a different question entirely. Different people have said different things. Kant said that we should treat people as a ends as opposed to just the means because um, they had rationality, right? Um, but Buber seems to be saying that we should be treating people in the I thou relation just because of their nature, just because they are people. Um, I don't know on that level, but I do have an intuitive sense that this is what we should be doing. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching if you did watch the whole thing. So if you liked that video and you would like to see more of this kind of rant, um, leave a comment or like the video or just watch the video a lot and I'll make sure I notice it. Thank you.